So hello and welcome. This is Robert Mitchell, Strategic Security Engineer at GitLab. Hello everyone, this is Usha Swami Nathan. I'm from the compliance team and we are here to give you a how-to of all the um, registering Okta and the initial setup and the step-by-step um, -step process of how it is being done. Um, you can see here that I'm logged into my personal email account. And I've, um, let's assume that I, it's day one for me. Um, and I've received this email saying, welcome to Okta. So mm -hmm. if I open up that email, um, it gives me a great message. Um, for the purposes of this, my name is Alex Tanuki. Um, so uh, <laughs> we've created a user that can work with that. It's a suitably, uh, suitably GitLab name. Um, so it tells me that I've, my, the organization is using Okta. Uh, you'll notice here that there's a link to a handbook page. The handbook page is going to have all of the relevant information about Okta as we evolve it. So if you ever get stuck, that's probably your key reference point. Um, but let's, let's jump straight in here. So it's telling us that we need to activate an Okta account. So if we click on this link, you'll see that it opens up a new tab. And okay. it says, welcome to GitLab, Alex. Uh, create your GitLab account. So the first thing you'll need to do is enter a password. So let me create a password. Rob, just, just to uh, interrupt here, the flow with GitLab's password policy. That's correct. So, that's so you'll see here that there are password requirements saying that you've got to have at a certain character length, lowercase, uppercase numbers. You can't have it as any part of your username. Um, so I will just put that password in again if I remember what I typed. That looks about right. Um, it asks you if you've got a, if you have a forgotten password question. So, um, what's the food you least liked as a child? What is the food you least liked as a child, Usha? Eggplant. eggplant. Anything to do with eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can also pick a click picture to be your security image. So we'll take the uh, we'll take the the, the the road less traveled, shall we say? Um, so we hit create okay. my account. This will now go and spend a little bit of time. And the first thing it'll ask us to do is set up multi-factor authentication. So when you're authenticating with Okta, the requirement is that it can use multiple factors of authentication. So we don't just use your password, we also use your phone. And the setup requires us to use a thing called Okta Verify. So Okta Verify is an app that you can install on your iPhone or your Android application or Android device. Uh, and what it will do is it will send a push notification to you. So um, if you go to the uh, Google Play Store or the I I iPhone App Store, uh, search for Okta Verify, you'll be able to, sort to, to put that in. If we click on Configure Factor, it actually asks us what device type. Um, for those people that still have Windows phones, it's still, still supported. Um, yep. so I've got an iPhone here. So it gives you a link so you can download Okta Verify from the App Store, um, but it's just as easy to go to the App Store and just search for it. I've already got that installed, so I'm just gonna click on Next. And what it does now is it gives you a QR code. So um, I'll now bring up the Okta Verify app. And all you need to do is, uh, within the Okta Verify account, just go Add Account, and then use it to scan, use your phone to scan that QR code. And it'll pick it up, Okay. Uh, you will receive another email um, and you're basically done. Uh, oh, how hard that was, was that? Easy. Fantastic. That was easy. That was pretty quick. So I'm right now, I'm, I have registered into Okta and this was my initial setup with the first login. Is that correct? So you haven't logged in yet. So we've just done the password setup. So let's just finish, let's just finish this process. Okay. And then we'll show you what logging in looks like. So there's a couple more things you've still got to do here. So as you can see, Okta makes your life easier, which is fantastic. Um, but what it's telling you here is that some of the apps require an Okta browser plugin. So if you're using Firefox or Chrome, there's actually a browser plugin that you need so that the Okta dashboard can work. So all I'm going to do here is just click on install plugin. All right. And I'll get an error, a message saying that uh, whether it wants to allow this. So I'll click on allow that. Takes a few seconds. Ask me if I want to add it, which I do. Yes. 
Okay. Uh, it's been added to Firefox. You can allow it to run on private windows. And if we then just refresh the browser, you'll see all of those warning signs that you had before have gone away. Right. Congratulations, you have now signed into Okta. That is um, pretty slick. Hmm. Okay, so let me just show you one other thing here. So that was using Firefox. Now, I know a lot of people use different browsers, so I wanna just show some of the slight differences that there are with some of the other browsers. So I'm gonna close this down. Okay. Most of and us use Chrome, Chrome, Rob. So this is me now in Chrome, and you'll see the same message about the Okta browser plugin. So again, I'll need to just install the plugin. And for this, it goes to the Chrome Web Store. So same process, add to Chrome, add the extension. Okay. And if we then go back to my applications and we refresh the browser, voila, we're in. Voila. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, there are some there are some people out there that uh, also use Safari. Safari is a little bit different in that Safari doesn't support browser extensions. So for Safari, one what you'll need to do is you'll actually need to go to the uh, to the Mac App Store and much like you did with installing the uh, Okta Verify application, you'll need to choose the um, Okta browser extension. 